Hello, welcome to 75 Hour Studio Instagram Live. This week is week 4 of the Fragment of Your Imagination Challenge 2022. And uh, we'll be tangling together uh, using some of the fragments featuring a uh, featured in the FYIC handout. Debbie New should be. Hello to everyone who's joining us live, and if you're tuning into the recording of this session, Thank you so much for choosing to hang out with us and tango along with us. Hi, baby. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think my iPad is lagging, but I think my phone is fine. I'm just trying to get my iPad working. Yeah, so, so I'm not sure what it is, but um, my iPad is very unstable today. Hello, okay. welcome to... Hey. Yeah. Feedback. <laughs> Alright, so if you're tangling along with us, do check out some tangling supplies, uh, a tile, some pens. Uh, you can tangle on a tinted tile, black tile, pen tile, grey tile, sketchbook. Okay. Uh, hang out together uh, for about an hour, an hour and a half, and uh, create some beautiful zentangle art together. We're not sure whether Susan will be joining us this week. But if you'd like to catch us on uh, Instagram, I am halfpen underscore will draw, Debbie's Tangled Dr. Suits. And you can follow us uh, at 745 Reverse, that is our studio's Instagram handle. Alright, lots of exciting things for today. Debbie, would you like to share with everyone what? you're using for today's session? Well, before I start out with what I'm using, so I have another pile that's on my desk, or rather my dining table. Uh, and also you can see uh, my iPad as well. So um, basically, uh, let me just walk you through what's on my desk. Anyway, I need to get rid of it or else I can't draw. <laughs> right, so I have um, with me the Zentangle Primer. So this is the primer. This is volume one. It's a hard cover. Can you see? Yeah, so the primer is the main resource for all things um, fragments and particular. So um, the month of January, we actually have uh, the fragments challenge called uh, a fragment of our imagination. So how that uh, came to be was um, midway, I, pro I think it was 2017, um, Zentangle Inc. introduced the concept uh, of reticular and fragments for the first time. And uh, as you can see, I'm actually flipping through the book. So uh, as you can see, there are three types of uh, fragments, the square, the triangle, and the round fragments. So um, wherever in the handout, um, you'll see a kind of like a code number, it, it actually corresponds to this book. So this is the primary resource uh, by Zentangle Inc. You can actually buy the book uh, from zentangle.com. Um, I'm hearing things about them being purchasable uh, on Amazon as well, but I'm not too sure uh, because I'm not a uh, really big fan of Amazon. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess you can, well, either way you can get a hold of it and buy, I guess. Um, and this is a second um, publication um, that was contributed to by no less than 250 CZTs or Certified Zentangle teachers who were present at uh, the Zen again, I think it was 2018. Um, so these are from teachers, uh, a lot of my friends are in here actually as I'm flipping, I find more of them. Um, all of these are teachers from around the world. So you get to see different perspectives and of course where, where some of the ideas are alike, you will also see that they are also distinct. And then on the last page of this book, which is a soft cover book, you have, um, you have a series of eight um, reticulum for you to fill up. So on each, uh, on each little snippet here, um, they actually put down the reticulum that they are using as well as the fragment they are using and also uh, the CDT uh, that's contributed it. So I think this is a fascinating book if um, you don't actually live close to uh, an actual CZT 
uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, and you want some insight as to how to kind of like put your fragments together to create larger patterns and meta patterns. Like um, if you take a look at these tripoli ones, some are beautiful. And then if you don't put them in a reticulum, you will never come up with uh, patterns like these. Uh, and of course, if you rotate them differently, they come out different as well. So these are the two books by Zentangle Inc. You can purchase them uh, from zentangle.com. Today, I also have um, my Marcus Operandus. Uh, you don't necessarily need this, but if in, in, the, in, the, in the case where you actually need something like that, you can actually download it off uh, for free uh, off Zentangle Inc. as well. So this is uh, the Zendala Marcus Operandus 1. We're not going to use this one today. I have downloaded the second one as well. So I'm using the second one today uh, just to show you um, that when you print it out, uh, you, you can actually cut paper down to the size that uh, is the actual Zentangle towel, for example. So I'm not sure uh, how many people actually uh, cut their own towels, but this is a very good measurement tool because then you, you have uh, the relevant sizes um, that Zentangle uses. And then, of course, uh, this is five size. So this is, a, this is a free download off of uh, Zentangle.com. This is Zendala Marcus Operandus 1 and Zendala Marcus Operandus 2. We are using the second one uh, when we cut paper. So this is a handy reference. Let me just put that aside as well. So um, we are on to the fourth week, actually, of uh, the FYIC challenge or a fragment of your imagination challenge. Uh, this is the second year that we are hosting this challenge. And so far, I think I've seen... Uh, a lot of incredible work. The body of work seems to be spectacular, even more spectacular than last year's. So for today, um, I'm not sure if um, Susan might be able to join us in a bit. She's, she's here, she's here. Oh, she's here? Great. Yeah, so, but she, her, her, her son's still awake, so she's just chilling with us for a while. Oh, I see. No Not problem. To on her um, right, so for, for week four, we actually um, picked several uh, fragments to show you. Um, I think Susan was going to do the 2M 3F fragment by Sandy mm. Kelly Jones. And Steph, are you doing the, the dewdrop and gemstones and pearls yeah, and marbles? I'm doing and... pearl and gemstone. Well, I think we should also try to incorporate uh, Oswaldo's and Ilbika's fragments. But, but I'll see what I can do uh, because I'm actually mm. going to demo Naki, which is by Nadine Roller. So... Um, 22 and 28 uh, days, days 22 and days 28 um, and of, of course if you, if you don't like uh, those uh, fragments you can swap out at any time we have um, we are more than 16 um, I think it's 24 yeah we have 24 fragments here that you can sort of swap in or pick and choose uh, the ones that you like so if we're not doing something that you like, you can swap it out and do something that you prefer. Um, for today's stream, um, as usual, you can uh, pick and choose from the reticulum at the back of your handout. Otherwise, uh, you can actually use the string that we have prepared today. So let me just get rid of this for the moment because it's huge. Uh, yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah, so stepping up. So... Today, uh, you actually need a regular towel. That's why uh, I mentioned the, the Marcus Operandus tool. So you need a regular towel and you need a Bijou towel. So the Bijou towel and a regular towel, right? So I'll just let uh, Steph uh, start off um, to show you what she has on her desk, like maybe her, her supplies. I'm using a tile tinted with... In these gang magicals and also some metallic paints. So it's extra what metallic paints are there? Are, are those? Um, I bought them off of AliExpress. <laughs> 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 but supposedly yeah. the seller said that they, they made them themselves, they made the paint themselves. So they are quite nice to use and they have like a, this one that I like, it's like a reddish purple kind of hue to it. And then also some gold just for the extra shimmer. Then you can see like the blue mica, mica here is like from the magicals. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is a 7F5R tile with a little doodle on the back. <laughs> but yeah, very simple setup. Today, I'm using my trusty 05 Black Micron, and then we'll figure out shading later on. Probably, uh, I'm going to shade with colored pencils for this tile. How about oh, okay. you? Well, I have a couple of pre-tinted pieces uh, on my desk as well. So if you notice that I have two pieces with like holes in them, uh, the, yeah. the ones that I'm holding up. Can you see the holes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because these are from my uh, sketchbook. You know, the one where I store oh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. the special papers and stuff. So these two have holes in them. They're both uh, pre-tinted by uh, Lindy's Gang, with Lindy's Gang magical uh, pigment powders. And uh, I have a third piece uh, that's also tinted, uh, also Lindy's Gang. But this one uh, came much later, so... It wasn't in the book, or rather, it wasn't in the scrapbook. So I, I, I probably picked one. Um, yeah. So these two larger pieces that I'm holding up now are actually Strathmore five hundred, which is a hundred percent cotton. So I think I think four hundred is great, but I don't really like four hundred. I find the five hundred better. So these come in a pre-cut uh, format. Uh, you have a very large. I think what was the largest size that? you remember like I don't know, like, bigger than letter size i think letter size was yeah, the middle, like a middle size yeah so they have like a uh, several uh sizes available that's pre-cut and of course us being us we kind of like uh buy all the different sizes and then get confused right yeah so this is uh stretch more and then this one the very bright pink one is uh fabriano medio invadis so you can see the shimmer is kind of like coming on camera nicely. Yeah, so the shimmer, there's a lot of shimmer on this towel. Um, I'm still not decided which one I will use, so I'm still staring at them. But basically, uh, you just need a regular size towel and a biju towel. So I'm just going to show you how to set up the string today, even though I haven't decided which towel I'm using. Let's see whether I can do that. So, um... Let me just demo how we are going to draw a string. So with a uh, regular size towel, uh, you can actually put down, uh, you can put it down straight if you like, or diagonally, or offset. So I'm going to use it offset because I think that it's more fun. And with a bijou towel, you're just going to put it either by the side, like this. So I've used contrasting colors so that I can show you uh, where it ends off and because, well, my camera isn't that fantastic. So... Just holding it up a little bit closer to the camera. Let me see if I can zoom in. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. Oops, now it's too zoomed in. Yeah, that's technology for you. Also because I'm a bit fiddly today with uh, the Instagram. So um, you can actually put it side by side or you can stack it. Uh, I think Steph is going to stack hers, right, Steph? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I was muted. That was like, mm. and then I was like, why, for, why for she a didn't? moment, I was thinking whether I lost <laughs> connection or something. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of a weird sort of tech day. Uh, whenever we have the live show, so we're not very uh sure of ourselves sometimes. Uh, so I think I might just use this piece. Um, Steph, where is your cow? Wait, wait, hold on. Oh, she's shy. I just, I just putting my. So I'm actually I'm trying towel. to decide whether I should stack my towels or like so put that put put them side by side I guess. Yeah. So Steph you're, is actually you're drawing a little bit, eh, Debbie. I'm already on four G actually, so I'm you're not sure what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, are you on four G? I am on four G. Yeah. So I don't think it's us. Oh, well, God. she's actually drawing out a, a little string demo for you guys. So maybe you have to zoom in a bit because it's kind of bitty. Oh, sorry. Sure. Switch things around. Are you stacking your towel? Yeah. Okay. So here's my idea. My idea is that I would have my regular sized towel be tilted. And then have my bijou be stacked. Top of it. Uh, 
I have a moment of indecisiveness here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like going back and forth my my cows. Trying to pick Susan, someone that... are you joining us, Susan? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why? <laughs> yeah, so that's my string. Your string, of course, can look different from ours. We can also use a just a oh, regular Susan. white tile. Doesn't have to be tinted like ours. Why do you shame either. Susan? So poor thing. I never. I just miss her. Are you here, Susan? Are you going to join us? <laughs> I don't think you really miss her. I think you are just you, you just want her back so that she can help you. Yo, like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We joke a lot, so this is kind of like how we talk normally. Don't don't be too alarmed. Mm-hmm. Steph, help me yes. choose this. I I think this one is kind of too messy to use. But um mm-hmm. like for a live show, it's gonna be very hard to focus. Which is a better how do you think? I think the blue one might be nice. Blue one? I'm mm. always doing blue though. Okay, I'll use the blue one. Pink, pink, pink. Well, well gentle, I, it's not really pink. I think we just go with the blue one. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... So how's your string going to be stacked, is it? Then I'll do mm, something yeah. else. If yours yeah. is stacked, then I will probably... I'll so my mine. thought process... My thought process is that I'm going oh, to use yeah. this bijou as like a... Guideline for my fascinator. For those of you who have uh, learned about the white seeds technique, uh, you know what a fascinator is. If you don't know what a fascinator is or what is white seeds technique, you can check out our Pinky Fate. There's a free preview on the technique that teaches you all about white seeds. Uh, it's a technique. Well, uh, yeah, it's a very basic technique though. I mean, yeah. the tutorial. It's a basic tutorial yeah. to get you started. Yeah, and it's a technique uh, created by Debbie. But I wouldn't fun. say I created it though. Coined it? I wouldn't say I created it. Actually, it's Whoa. inspired by uh, Maria Thomas's mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so when you are done with um, the placement of your cows and you are satisfied, like I think I am for now, so I'm just going to put in a little bit of a pencil mark so that I don't lose everything. Um, yeah. So I don't think you can see my pencil mark uh, because my towel is pretty dark colored today. Uh, I might not be able to see it. But I think, let's see if I can hold it up. Oh. You see my pencil lines? Pencil lines. Okay, probably not. But yeah. No, no. Um, I should brought it up to the camera. I think I'm lagging. Or oh, you are lagging. Or someone's lagging. No, I saw it. Saw. I saw oh, the video. Okay. Yeah, well, my iPad is uh is really lagging because <laughs> I, I've already sat back down and then I'm just, just about bringing the thing to the camera on my iPad. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, live programs and uh, the joy of lagging. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, shall we start with like a gemstone or shall we like start with the fragment? The gemstone is a fragment, right? What I mean, which thing do you want to start with first? Should we go in order of base? I'm very confused as to your question. What okay, are you we start with? We start with gemstone. They are all first, fragments. Right? <laughs> hey, they are all fragments, Steph. I I I, I will be showing question. you. I will be showing you some examples of gemstones. This one was a cow tinted. I think it's watercolors and the metallic pink. This is a and meet people from the Letterbox Co. Oh, it's a Singapore brand. So I did a little gemstone, little red gemstone. Oh, it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to see, you know. Because mm-hmm. when you when you are going to demo a gemstone, it's easier to start on white paper. Yeah, I'm just sure. Maybe you do that on the back. You can yeah. use tinted tiles. Yeah, I, I prepare a white tile, and then here are yeah. some examples. So you can see two pearls and a gemstone. So let's create a gemstone together. If you're using a tinted tile like Debbie said, maybe you want to start off on a, a white tile. Here I have a white tile. Yeah. Then we'll, we'll be drawing a gemstone together. So if you're not um, really great at drawing ovals of circular shapes, you might want to use a pencil to draw the base shape of your gemstone. 
usually with pearls, I try to draw them smaller than I normally would draw uh, my gemstones. So in comparison, gemstones can be quite large. Right. I should so also say point. that I should also say that this is definitely Jennifer's way of drawing gemstones because I think a lot of people have different ways. Uh, a lot of CCTs have their own techniques, so, and if you click through, thing. yeah, and if you click through the handout, uh, you will find Lin Mead's way of drawing as well as K Yoshino's way of drawing uh, gemstones, and I think I think Lin's is dew drops. Mm. Yeah, and of course, uh, you can switch them out to draw pearls as well, and marbles. So all things shiny, right? Mm. The inner yeah, of inner now. crow. <laughs> <laughs> now of course, inner magpie, inner magpie. Yeah. So yeah, now there are a lot more like different ways to to draw gemstones. Like they got like tiger's eyes and all sorts of like fancy things. Turquoise. Yeah. Moonstones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Moonstone. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a very simple way of drawing a pearl. Usually, you want to pick uh, quite light colours for this. So I'm using the one colour soft coloured pencil. This is uh, the darkest point is C390, then it's C470, and this one is C490. Yeah. The labelling on my coloured pencil has sort of worn off because they're very well loved. Yeah, but just um, pick lighter shades, you know. Usually... When you're drawing gemstones, the, the dark part of it can sometimes even be black. But for pearls, I try to stick to quite light colours, yeah? So you're going to imagine a sort of middle line uh, tr that runs through the pearl. And it's going to follow that round shape of the pearl. So let me zoom you in a little more. Yeah. So that's the start. We're starting first with the darkest colour, which is still quite light. Oh, pardon me. Then we're going to slowly build a gradient outwards. So we're, we're keeping very light pressure on our colored pencil. Uh, you want to add layers to your, your pearl, your gems. All right, moving to the next color. Moving to the next color, so moving to the second color. And then outwards. Both on the top and on the bottom. And you, if you notice, I'm following a sort of like a um, circular sort of pattern when I'm shading my color. Yeah. And then lastly, we're switching to our lightest color. Not quite reaching the, the bottom because we want to save that white uh, space and then use a white colored pencil it's a little grubby. A little grubby. People. Yeah. Because our pearls are so light, right? We want to make sure that um, the white color pencil does not have any other colors on it. All right. And at this point, we feel like, oh, it's um, the colors are still too light. You can go work your way backwards from the lightest color, moving back down into the medium color, and then lastly, and then the darkest color. But your pearl should remain quite light in tone. So that's my pearl. You also need a white pen. So I have two pens with me. I have, I think, a jelly roll ten. I have a jelly roll 10 and a uniball signal bra. So you can use whatever white pen that you have. And then basically, you're adding these two, two dots of white and then maybe a smaller dot on one side. So that it looks like it's glowing. You okay. get this sort of nice subtle sheen on your pole. Yeah, you can of course add a bezel around your uh, pearl. So a very simple one would probably be tipple. It's just circles. If you don't like this, you can do a simple um, aura around it and then add lines to it. It's just like, you know, jewelry, actual jewelry, there'll be like a setting around the um, gem, right? So this mimics that sort of effect. 
So here's my pearl. Now with a gemstone, usually like I mentioned, um, I start off quite dark. So you'll still need your white colored pencil, but you can of course change out your colored pencil for or your, your color scheme for a different color. I think because I have blue, maybe I'll do a red one. Do a red one next. So your red color scheme can actually uh, go into orange if you want. Let me flip the colors around so the darkest is on the left. So uh, the darkest shade, the one on the left is C150. The next one is C130 and then C110 followed by C080. Huh? So it's just a very dark cranberry color and then a sort of dark red and then a true red and then an orange. And then of course you'll need or white color pencil, right? So if you imagine, so you can see the example here. Is that Susan? Ah, Susan's trying to join us. Okay, let me see whether I can admit her. Uh, basically, we start off from the bottom left of our gemstone. Hi, Susan. Hello. Glad that you can join us. Sorry for okay. late. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I need to okay. change my angle because I don't know what yeah. it is with um, Instagram. Whenever uh someone joins, it's kind of like your whole screen sort of has to be rigid. Yeah. Is it better now? So, I might want to move up a little bit because you might get move oh, that's up. very far away. No, no, no. Down, move, down. Up. move down. Yeah. Move the wrong what is way. up and what is down? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Is this better? Ah, yes, I yes. I think I just got here. Because I, I can't get the angle right. <laughs> and I'm afraid to topple the whole the whole setup. So I'll just... Yeah, I'm clumsy. So, so yeah. Gemstone, gemstone darkest corner, uh, bottom left. You're creating kind of a U shape. And then I'm moving to my next color. So again, small circular strokes. Uh, creating a gradient. You don't want to press down too hard on your color pencils. So um, if you feel like, oh, it's not dark enough, you can always go back to add more layers. So you can see with my true red, I'm actually adding uh, the true red to the top edge of my gemstone and then blending it out with the bottom area, bottom left area. And then lastly, through the orange shade, leaving some space for the white. Now red is actually quite a dark color, so you want to have your uh, white space be quite large so that when you blend it, it doesn't end up uh, becoming all red. Okay, then I think it's doing the pigment. Yeah, yeah. Like pigment don't on red. mix that. It, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't lift well. You know, it's like you know some colors can be manipulated well, but red is kind of like the once you put it down, you can't really shift it that well. I mean, I've noticed it across uh, different kinds of mediums. I think it's mm -hmm. not a... I think all mediums have that issue. What do you think, Steph? Yeah. yeah. If you're working with, like, uh, different... Yeah, different, like, materials or so, like, if I was doing this with watercolours or with... I think one on one of our Instagram live, Debbie showed us how to use brush paint to create a gemstone. Oh, so yeah. So that's also a very different technique, yeah. Well, I have I have something here that's done with brush pens. Can you see? Yeah, so it's actually a very transparent version of um the gem that is kind of sister to the dewdrop. It's more like a dewdrop than a gem actually, right? But of course it's mm. it's it's also you can actually uh still uh adjust the gradations. Gradations? You call it gradations? Gradient? Yeah. Gradient? Gradients? Yeah, so you can actually add um, and mix the inks so that you add contours, you know. Uh, but it's not, um, it's not a, what do I, what I'm trying to say is that it's not very <laughs> precise. Yeah, it's not very precise. It's not, it's not like, um, you know, when you use uh, color pencils. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Mm. So, so um, it, it kind of like the okay. look that you want, right? Yeah. Sorry. So another thing I, I wanted to mention. The lag is confusing. Yeah, us. it is. It is. 
Well, another thing I wanted to mention is actually how smooth your paper is. So if you notice, like this paper actually has uh, quite a bit of texture on it, especially if I hold it at an angle, you can see like the shadows that the paper create. This paper that I'm using here is a lot smoother. So if your paper is very textured, right, um, you might need to add more layers on your gemstone in order to make it look very smooth. Because if you think about like a, a real life gemstone, right, it's kind of like glass and polish most of the time, right, unless you buy a raw gemstone, right? So to get that polished look, um, you if your paper is very textured, you have to really add a lot of layers of colors and film. That might be a lot more tedious. So the paper that you use also is important. Yeah. So that is my gemstone. Switching to my white pen, I'm using a signal Uniball signal broad. Uh, basically, just the top part of my gemstone. I'm adding a little bit of highlight. And then on the darkest part, not quite touching the edge of my gemstone, but on the darkest part of my gemstone, I'm going to also add another bit of highlight. And then that creates that sort of glossy look to a gemstone. Yeah. So again, with the bezel, you can choose your own bezel. It can even be a uh, tangle uh, that you like. Uh, I, I see that some people, a lot of people often use mukha as a bezel. So you can of course do that, especially today's um, session, one of the fragments that we're using features for Mukha shape, right? So this might be a good um, bezel idea to tie in with the other fragment. So turn the towels you go along, by pressuring the pen. How are you, Susan? Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. The gemstone is really, it's a good one for me to calm down. <laughs> 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 and to warm up also. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll think mm. he's having a very tough day today. All of us. I think it's different. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, this is one of those things. Uh, Let's just put it that way. Today is a very hot day. Hot outside and hot inside. <laughs> sure. You know, it's like everyone is coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. It's just how it feels. Uh. Yeah, so Susan, what do you have on your desk? Okay, I'm actually using the uh, classic white towel and also one uh, I stand by or uh, tan towel, the video. So mm -hmm. I'm still not really sure what I'm going to do later, whether to, to draw on both towels mm -hmm. or maybe just one. Yeah. Okay, so, so our, string, our string today is actually just a regular towel and a biju towel. So how I, uh, well, so just, just to recap for you. Uh, so I basically set out my towel like that. Uh, can you see? Wait, my yep. screen is lagging. Yeah, so basically that's how I'm setting out my string. Steph is stacking hers. So hers mm -hmm. would be like the biju stacked on the regular towel on the semi fire towel. So our... Well, it's the same string, it's the same idea, the same concept, but I think it'll have very different outcomes. I'm doing mine in a what's-it style, so, yeah. yeah. So just to close the loop, uh, basically I'm just finishing by adding some rounding to my towel. So there's mukha, I've added tipple, and then a little bit of flux, uh, just to tie in with one of the fragments that we'll be drawing later, 2M3F. So you have mocha and flux, so I thought that would be a nice bezel for uh, this gemstone. Yeah, so it's very simple. It's just a lot of layering and a lot of patience. A lot of finessing. Yeah, I think that's about it for A me. lot of fiddling. A lot of, yeah, fiddling. Yeah, another way oh. um, if you want to... fiddle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, this is a very simple <laughs> way. I'm going to draw it for you live. live uh, basically, um, if I'm just using basic tangling supply. So it's pen, pencil, tortillon, right? I will draw a little smiley face on the bottom left of my uh, circle, this pop. You can also do this in an oval, but I prefer a circular shape. And I, if you can notice, I'm actually not quite touching uh, the edge of this circle. And then with my tortillon, I'm going to blend it upwards. Again, not quite touching the edge. Turn it into a circle. And then having that light uh, the light source, I guess, the light part of it, yeah, the top, almost top highlight. Right corner. 
the highlight. Thank you very much. And then I speak English. Uh, and then again, using my pencil, I just uh, just. It's a long day. A long day. And then of course, with your uh, white jelly roll, you can add little highlights. So, little large dot, little dot, and then a little smiley face. Oh, and that creates the look of um, a pearl, a gemstone, just in black and white. Yeah. Okay, that's all for me. And of course, uh, start drawing your gemstone on your tile. Let me see, I need to change my color scheme. So if you're just joining us live, basically just take a tile, tangle along with us. Uh, we started off uh, by learning how to draw gemstones and pearls. You can add that to your tile. I think Debbie uh, just recently told us that the string is a regular size tile in the bijou. So, you know, you, you can go your own way. And then later on, yeah. we'll be using uh, two other... Or you can... Two. Can I go Sorry. ahead? No, I was saying you can you can use that or you can go back to the handout and grab one of the yes. maximum that's already there and you don't yeah. have to set up already. And print yeah. it. I've seen some people are very smart. They don't even copy over onto their own tile. They just print the whole page and there you go. Yeah, well, <laughs> good if to you go. print it on good paper, yeah. uh, it can withstand a lot of uh, tangling actually that way. And it also saves you time. So um, give the handout a little bit of time to load when you're trying to download because I think the files are kind of huge. Yeah. So um, just sneaking in a bit of uh, your digger boy's fragment sharpen. Sharpens? Mm -hmm. Sharpens? Yeah. I, I try to do it like a Hirari version, you know? I, I, yeah, yeah. I think I see more Hirari than Sharpens though. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, oops. Yeah, oops. Yeah, and, and also because my paper is like uh, already colored, so my gemstones this time I I just basically um put in an ink wash uh in Prussian blue, so um actually it's just it's just pre tinted and then just washed a, a little bit of uh, Prussian blue just to give it a bit of definition. So I didn't really do much for my gemstones. Uh, I think Susan want to talk about your gemstone or you're not ready yet. Yes, I think I have done my gemstone the inside, but just need to have some time for the outside. So mine is a combination of the blue, green, and pink. Yeah. Wow. wow. Your gemstone very expensive. <laughs> yeah, very greedy. Want to take all the colors. <laughs> mm. Well, if I did that, it'll probably not come out nice at all. So I think yours is because you have the mm. skill. <laughs> yeah, like rainbow vomit later. No, yeah. but, but green and pink not necessarily can go together. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, come out, come out brown. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll give Susan a little bit more time and I will start to show you what Naki looks like. How about that, Susan? Okay. Oh, are you ready? Yeah, you, you can have Naki first. Okay, I'll do Naki first. Alright, so, well, because I have a lot of space on the back of my towel today, I'm using a Strathmore 500 series. You can buy this pre-cut in different sizes. Where's my micron? Uh? Oh, goodness. I didn't prepare a micron. Okay, oh, never mind. You will see a draw pen. Well, I only have a 0.1 micron, so I think it will just look very scrawny and thin on the camera. But I'll zoom in with my camera. And is it clear, Steph? Okay, so yes. Naki. Naki by Nadine. Right? So Naki actually stands for Nadine Eight Kiwi. Right. Mm. So Naki is a very interesting uh concept because it's more of a filler than a tangle, but then also it can be a tangle by itself. So why do I say that? It's because um let me just show you the four fragment types again. Uh, I think I should. Am I in, in camera? Yeah. Please stop me if I'm not, because I'm super zoomed in. <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay, with, with Naki, you can actually fill any shape, uh, or create a shape with Naki, 
And why I say that is because, uh, for example, if I'm using a square fragment, you can actually um, start out with a round orb in the center or a dot just to show that that's your center. And then you can put down lines and round those lines. So add just a little touch of ink to where they meet. And that is your square fragment. Just, um, just the square fragment actually already presents a lot of variations because of how Naki is. Uh, it's also part of, uh, part, partly a filter. A filter. Filler. Super. Filler. See, Instagram. Thanks, Instagram. Yeah, so even, even if you don't want to fill uh, your square fragment like that in quartz, you can actually fill it this way as well. And it will still look uh, very nice. And it's still naki because uh, you are basically orying on the inside or on one side. Or you can also do it on both sides. So you can ori on the inside, on one side, both sides, all sides. It's a very um, versatile tangle. So this is naki and this is also naki. It's just that how you feel the fragments different. And then, of course, uh, I think one of my sample fragments at the back has a triangle naki. Am I wrong? Maybe I should just scooch for a Triangle fragment. Ah, uh, yeah, there. Actually, I have two. Uh, let me figure out how to show this on screen. Yeah, so like green summer socks with this huge folder. Steph, can you see the naki? Yes, now I can see. Yeah, so these two are naki. Both are naki in a triangle, but very different outcomes. Um, basically, it's just rounded auras. Would you say so? Rounded auras? And, and of course, this end, uh, is this end next to the two triangles. This end, end fragment in a round, oh, end shape in a round fragment. Right? This one is also another type of naki. Let me just get out this folder. Also looks like a yeah. triangle zonked. Zonked also yeah. that rounded. Yeah, it, rounded lines, right? Round, mm -hmm. Rounded aura, aura lines. So this can be also divided uh, differently. So I, I did it like this just now. But I can also put in um, something else and divide it in a different way. Like, mm, let me see. Okay, like that. So that's Naki. And then the round one will look like the one that I show you with Zong. So you have like a, a Z or an N shape. And then you kind of add rounding this way. So this way. Add all us and then add the roundings. Yeah, I'm not doing it very nicely here. But I think you get my point. And of course, uh, even with the seed fragment that's in the handout, you, you, you can also change up how you draw your naki within the seed fragment. So I'm going to draw it differently to the handout. Uh, like this. So I have the inner aura in the shape of a seed, another seed, and another aura. So it's all, it's all, it's kind of like you're stacking the naki on the inside, you know. But then you also have a bit of a rounding to sort of like uh, mitigate the sharp edges. So one thing interesting about Naki is that it takes on any shape that you want. So for example, if I'm going to put down uh, an asterisk or like maybe a, I think this is like eight-sided, eight-sided cross, right? You can actually fill uh, Naki Kind of like, I think there's another tangle um, that looks like that as well. So you can fill a lot of space just with your auras and your rounded auras. Right? And of course, you can also put this in another fragment, a round fragment or an oval fragment. So it's really, um, there's a lot of uh, options that you can play with for Naki.
하면서 없이 입신 개수. 그래서 잘 좀. 야, 카이 너. 근데 이거 이거 하위 되잖아. 탱고. 예, 이거 not quite. 예. 되잖아. 탱고 아, 내가 시작 써 like that. I can't remember the name. So, one of the older ones. Is it Drup? No, not Drup. D R U P E. Yeah. Okay, my brain is not very uh, alert today, but we'll we'll take it. The only brain I got. <laughs> <laughs> Change our order. This is the step. Try my best. I'm trying my best. Try my best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's one of those days. Yeah. Okay, so you can actually put it in a round circle as well. So then let let's just pretend that it's like a round or an oval one. So there you go. You have another way of filling a round or oval fragment, or misshapen uh fragment. Why? It's nice, right? I mean, these sort of things happen in nature, right? Mm -hmm. It's not perfectly round. Wow, I see. Um, Susan Yeo has a very interesting naki on her towel already. Yeah. So I take it I that Susan is proper. Yeah, so I take okay. it that Susan is properly round. Uh, pro properly warmed up. And yes. Show us. Probably rounded. Show us. Yeah. Oh, I I have I have the Naki sample here. So I think this was drawn by Stephanie, though. I think this part was drawn by you, right? Yeah. Steph? Yeah. 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 So you can actually make it look like fishes. I think someone drew fishes. You know. Uh. Huh. Yeah. So it's cute, lah. It's very cute. Yeah. Okay. I'm done with my demo. Um. I'm going to move to my towel. And wait for Susan to start out her demo. So can Hello, I start Susan? now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can okay. <laughs> cannot. <laughs> cannot. <laughs> cannot. Then I <laughs> offline. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Today I'm going to uh share about this. One of the in the FIIC is the two M plus three F. Okay. Actually, the last time I keep confusing about this thing. So it's two mocha and three plus. <laughs> <laughs> got two male, three female. I thought no, 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 no. <laughs> eh? <laughs> no, no, cannot. <laughs> I confused with the uh, two plus and three mocha. But actually, oh. I think it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Well, you can vary it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You can vary it. yeah. So next time I can come up with uh, any combination of the tango, then give them a special name. <laughs> So basically, yeah. in the uh, FYIC, uh, the handout is in a grid, in a square grid uh, segment. Mm -hmm. So you can just go through Mocha. I think there's a no restriction on how you want to grow which this. Direction? Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, which direction you can just decide yourself. Maybe one big Mocha and one baby Mocha. Then also you can grow some flux. I think, I think for I think this class, as long as hmm. yeah, as long as you show them yeah. the original, then they can sort of like see how you're varying it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes when the space is a lot, right? You can have mm. you can have the freedom to have more, yeah. more flux. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is a quite a fun uh, tangle. You can make it in a grid. Then maybe uh at the beginning you decide what's the the particular you want to have something like this, then you repeat this. Then the other idea that I uh, got it is actually, I have an invisible fragment. So the fragment actually is in your mind. You just grow your <laughs> mocha. A fragment of your imagination. So it's oh. a yeah. yeah, a fragment of your imagination. Really the imagination. You know, you know it's like the Empress New Clothes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I can see. You all cannot see. Yeah. yeah. Blind, so well, you cannot see. I can see. <laughs> So you just decide maybe the point where you want to grow is the, like the, the second grid that you have. So with the invisible one. But if let's say some people, they, they cannot really imagine I draw out something. It's something like this. The square is like um, in a, it's stacked together and overlapping and it is not in the order of something. It's not in order like the square, the grid. But it's still a fragment. But this fragment is like Dancing around, going surrounding, yeah. So you just this is what I call the the fragment of the imagination. 
<laughs> and it and and actually you end up something like you can um put it in the place that you you organize them in the way because some sometimes my students told me that when they do the mocha or the flux they do not know how to grow it they do not know what step the next step after they they did the maybe two or three so this is a, some way like you you have an imagination of your the fragment in your brain something like this yeah okay maybe some people still feel very confusing then you keep to this uh. <laughs> yeah yeah Actually, actually, this confusion in the brain, right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, but if you, you put brain. your confusion on the paper, you have a clearer uh, a view. Yeah, instead of keep <laughs> thinking inside your mind. So it's like a, a fragment of your confusion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like um, someone looking for trouble, is it? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not looking for trouble, but I did, I did actually mix up something. So, l- let me show you my, my, my 2M and 3F. And then you will see mm. what I'm trying to say. Can you see my 2M and 3F with a gem in the middle? Yeah. yeah so, what happened was I made a mistake. Uh, I don't know where it's my mistake now, but I made a mistake and I, I had to turn my, uh, my flux into Luna flux because of the mistake. But this is nice. I like this one. So, uh, it's not on purpose though. I can't remember what I did though. <laughs> so I can't repeat it also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you have to like analyze before. Confusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is something yeah, interesting really for the inner Zentangle. You make some mistake when you did that, but after that, you will just forget about this one. They will so like, you start to... You yeah. Is. Not fine after that. It's a good, it's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to squeeze in some of Oswaldo's tangle as well. Actually, Oswaldo was supposed to join us today as well, uh, as our first ever special guest. But because he's still um stuck in Colombia, I think, so uh, it will probably have him join us uh another day. Uh, Oz is uh, a good friend of ours. Uh, I, I think I've known him for several years now, actually. Come to think of it, uh, time really passes very fast. Yeah. So, uh, ladies, anything else you want to say before I start the questions? I got a question for Susan. Yes. <laughs> your color, your color pencil. Your gemstone is use what to cover? I use a color pencil. The, the, okay. the Sakura Sakura okay. yes. uh, someone, asked, yeah, some, someone asked um, whether we're using pastels they said no we're using colour pens and I was like I yeah. think I, I don't own Susan is using colour pens <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't own any pastels if you want to sponsor us uh, please do mm. yes you should write to us <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I do I own any pastels no I only have white pastel actually yeah, I don't own any textiles. I have intense here with me and tombos and sakura coin brushes. Mm. Oh, I don't know how to draw. <laughs> Why you don't know how to draw? I don't know what to draw inside my, my what seats. Well, you have okay. Naki and then you have Ganosinos. Ooh, ooh, okay, is, it, is, it, is it Gamosinos or Gamosinos or how do you, you ask me? <laughs> uh, no, la, I'm just verbally, you know, just rambling. Maybe someone, someone know the can answer, tell yeah. us in chat. Yeah, 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 because they might know the answer. Well, I'm not Obviously. Spanish, uh, but I wish I were not Chinese. So, wow. the, yeah. Why? Just don't wish Why? I'm Chinese. That's all. Who's eating sweets? Not me. I've got like wrappers somewhere. Oh, I get my tortilla from a plastic. <laughs> okay. Yo, so busy. Who's eating sweets? You crave for street, sweet. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's like Charlotte. She's like 
Like, what you think? Can she she? <laughs> yeah, I can she she? Because it's like she will come and ask you. What you think? Then you say no more. Then you, she want to see. It's like to make sure that yeah, don't believe you. Yeah, yeah the cheat should be feeling. Okay, so can I start? Yeah, can. Yes. Okay, actually, I was going to ask Oz how he found Zentangle, but because we don't even have Oz, so we cannot ask him, right? So mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you guys, how did you find Zentangle in the first place? Susan, you go first. I think I, the, the first thing I saw is, uh, okay, from the Facebook, but the thing I saw in the Facebook is not Zentangle, but it's the mandala. Oh. Uh, the mandala is the one that attracts me at the first time. Then uh, there's a, I think there's an event in the, the Facebook. Then uh, I actually call the organ- organizer and ask him more about the course. The time is uh, still the uh, uh, in-person class. Then I found that that one is a two and a half day course. Then what he told me is actually uh, in this two and a half day, you will complete one drawing. So I think like, oh, there's one must be a very huge drawing. Then with yeah. all the colorful everything, then I start to feel that, whether can I did that? Can I, can I have? Do I have the ability to commitment, complete those? Right? Because, uh, it's not the the commitment of the time, but it's that because I, I'm not an art student. I do not have any background of arts. Okay, so so after I uh look at all the details, everything I say, mm, this one is too tough for me. Then when I search the Google all the information of the mandala, then I saw Zentangle. Then I said, hey, this one is much more simple. <laughs> so I tried to, in the YouTube, to get some to draw. Then just try and say, hey, the outcome is very nice. So I start to look around in Johor Bahru. Is there any Zentangle teacher who um, start with any workshop? But I cannot, cannot find. So in, in the end is I think I waited for don't know how many months and there's a teacher from Kuala Lumpur come to the JB and then I attend the basic class. Yeah, that's the Actually, how I meet Stephanie. Huh? Yeah, class from Stephanie. The one is yeah. in 2015. Which month? Which month? Ah? <laughs> Which month? <laughs> Which no, month? Yes, uh? I cannot. No, yes, I cannot remember. Ah, uh. <laughs> September <laughs> is my first class. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. But I think a few months before that, I already start looking for that. Yeah. Hmm. Or maybe you saw Stephanie, but you think cannot. Uh. <laughs> Cause, cause Stephanie, I cannot, or she cannot. <laughs> uh, don't know. Whatever is cannot. Uh. Something is cannot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the time there is no <laughs> online class. Online class yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but it's also true because you know why? Every every uh Zentangle teacher has their own style. So yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. So at that point, right when we see each other's work, right, we might think cannot know. But then after a while, when the person evolve, when you evolve, actually maybe can you know? Yeah. So that's that's mm. the interesting thing about interesting thing about art, like, I guess people are always evolving, right? I mean, even Zentangle is evolving. Yeah, it's also Yuan mm-hmm. Fen. Yuan Fen is something like destiny. De- destiny? Mm-hmm. Destiny? So, my destiny with Stephanie is come so late. Yo. Maybe it's good. Lah. Maybe last night it's so full nonsense, you probably cannot find her. And me, eh? You got more patience. Yeah, you got it. It's not your Yo, problem now. I want refund. Refund? Refund to who? I want refund. <laughs> to my mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just asked you. Hi, Joni. Can I have a refund? I got called by a daughter. And for me, yeah, every time people ask me, how do you find Zentanga? I always say I, I'm not very sure. I can't remember, like, what's the... Yo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Susan got, like, a whole story of, like, her process mm. and all. I don't really know, like, for me. I think maybe also it's, like, you, but it's online. But past that, I don't have any details of like, what is it that I saw online that caused me to know about it? Like, maybe like Debbie said, you're fun, right? Eh? Mm. You're fun to, to know about this. Mm. Debbie, you well, like? From, yeah, so for me, for me, I found... Uh, okay, so I'm, I've always been a crafter. 
So I always like to uh, do like handmade jewelry and and for a long time I was selling uh, handmade stuff. Um, after I left my corporate work, so I worked uh, a while in uh, corporate and then later government service and then after government service went back to private and stuff. So I've been working uh, and then at some point. I decided to take a break uh, because of medical issues, take a break um, and go back to crafting. So uh, one of the one of the sites that I actually uh, used to hang out on was Swapboard. Yeah, Swapboard. So Swapboard, primarily you just swap things with people. Uh, this was before the pandemic, of course. I don't want to swap gems now, so I've stopped hosting swaps. But <laughs> I used to host... <laughs> I'm serious! I'm serious! <laughs> I used to host... Um, I used to host a lot of swaps. Um, I met a lot of uh, tanglers that I still know nowadays, or still talk to nowadays, through swaps. So, uh, one day I actually was in a group that was swapping earrings, you know. So we kind of make earrings, and then... Uh, when the swap is assigned to you, you just send it along to the next person. So if I send you one pair, and then you send your pair to another person, and then another person will send to me, you know, something like that. So that's how we started swapping. Oh, Robin. And um, mm. um, it's all assigned by the bot. So you don't get a say as to who you are sending to, uh, but you find out later like, through the site. So actually, how I found out about Zentangle was, I, I saw that it was one of the categories of swapping. So swapping, you can swap postcards, you can swap, uh, if people even swap cloth, you know, like, you know, cloth uh, uh, sashes or, or, or like snippets of samples uh, of cloth, you know, and then there are people who swap stamps and there are people who swap jewelry like me, like small, uh, lightweight stuff, like, not, not heavy stuff because nobody wants to pay that kind of shipping, right? And also taxes. So they try to avoid taxes, so they sell like or they swap um, very light and cheap stuff. So um, there are also virtual swaps where nothing changes uh, hands. Uh, for example, if I join the swap, right, I'm supposed to go and follow 10 people on Instagram. And then 10 people will come and follow me. So there, there are a lot of different types of swaps. There are also people who like promote their Facebook group in that manner as well. Like, oh, I like your page, you like my page, you know. And then mm. if you don't like my page, I get to rate you down because you didn't like my page. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's kind of fun, la. It's fun. Anyway, this is pre-pandemic, okay? So please don't judge me. Yeah, this is quite, quite, quite a long time ago, right, actually. It's like 2013, 2014 kind of time. So one of the, one of the categories uh, was actually Zentangle. And at that point of time, I was quite curious, like, what on earth is a Zentangle? And, and of course, I went to Google and find out more. And I got into, um, I got into a few swaps and I hosted swaps uh, based off of Zentangle art. So we would swap things like, oh, draw a postcard and then you send it to your friend, you know, and then you receive someone else's postcard. Uh, we did postcards, we did greeting cards, we did, uh, I think we did ATCs, we also did twin, twin cheese which is actually mm. Biju size. Um, and then I realized that actually, uh, actually you could get certified. So at that point also, besides swapping, I was also drawing uh, for the Diva Challenge. So, you know, it's like every week, uh, this, this is CCT Laura Hams. I think her name is Laura Hams. Mm. She has a blog where she will publish uh, a challenge uh, for people to participate in and it's called the Diva Challenge. So basically, she'll just give you a prompt like, okay, today we are drawing gemstones. So everybody will draw gemstones and post them on their blog. So this is like a era where people are still blogging. I think now people blog less, but I know people still blog. Lah. It's just a lot less. Uh, and the people and also. We would... Sorry? We are the people, so we still blog. <laughs> yeah, we still blog. Uh, there are people who still blog. It's just that a lot of people have stopped because I think microblogging is easier. You can just put something on Instagram in like five minutes, right? Rather than write and write and, and put in coding and all kinds of links and then 
you know, still not be done uh, half a day later or something, right? So, but at that point, that was the in thing. Uh, we would go to everyone's blogs and then leave comments, you know, like, oh, I saw your, your art on the challenge and it's so fun and, you know, like, what do you think of mine? You know, the kind of, it's kind of like conversation as well. Um, so that was how I got into Zentangle. But I also uh, found that Zentangle helped me a lot uh, to stay off medication because at that point I was uh, going through a period in my health that wasn't that fantastic and I was prescribed a lot of drugs that made me feel like I was losing control over my mind, losing control over my body and I felt so out of it and um, you know I'm the kind of person right you you name the side effects, right? And you think someone else gets it, right? But I will be that person who will get it, you know? Yeah, mm. so so I'm the kind of person mm. where other people might not have side effects and then I'll have, I have all 10 or something like that, you know? So that was the kind of life I had, just just to prevent pain. So, so an example would be something like, you know, my doctor uh, prescribes me painkillers just to prevent the pain, right? Or help me with the pain, right? But the painkillers will cause me 10 other side effects. And then I'll be like, out of it, you know, like the whole week, just because I took painkillers or something. And then, and then, you know, you have to get another drug just to combat that mm. first, first drug. And then when does it end? You know, so I refuse to, after, after a few months, I, I, I kind of told myself that, you know, either I'll become a drug addict at this rate, or my, my, my kidney will just give up on me at this rate, you know, so I decided I'm going off drugs. And of course, it's not an easy thing, uh, well, especially being in an Asian family, right? You tell people that you're not taking the medicine. Everyone and their granny will come after you. Yeah, so basically, it was a hard fight to say, stay medicine-free and drug-free. Uh, and Zentangle really helped me, especially uh, to focus uh, not on the pain anymore. Yeah, so that's that was my scary part of my life, then I'm glad it's over now. So, so basically, um, would you say that you found Zentangle uh, accidentally? Or, well, it sounds like the three of us found it uh, accidentally though. I'm not, not looking for it. Hmm. I think sometimes this, um, either is we found Zentangle or Zentangle found us. <laughs> it's something very interesting. You know, like, just like when you buy a book, right? I remember uh, uh, there's a time that I buy a book. Actually, the one is just my husband just uh, get it from the bookshelf, then pass to me. Then I asked him, why are you interested to buy this book? He said, no, <laughs> just for you to, to look at it. She, he actually he just look at the cover, then he just passed to me. Then after I read for a few pages, then I start to love it fall in love with this kind of book. It's something called a zero limit. Yeah, this, that one is very uh, many years ago. Then so from that time, I think that actually is sometimes when, sometime when you go to the bookstore, there's a lot of books on the shelf. Then you just pick one. Mm. So it's either you found the book or the book actually attracts you to please get me, please bring me home, something like that. So the Zentangle, I think sometimes is um, when the time is right, then you are able to to see it from the the internet. Otherwise, in the internet, there's so many information. You you there's a lot of info, but you only attracted by some of it. So it depends on maybe um yuan fen or like what we just say just now. Yeah, mm. is the the time is right, then you you that one is resonate with you, then you attract to that. Is it is it something like how you found us? <laughs> this one I need to think more. <laughs> Until today, still find that very dramatic. Yes. Mm. We are dramatic, or you found that the, the thing is. Huh? Sorry? Yeah, no, go huh? What? What do you say? Well, I was going to say someone in chat say, said, said that you were very, you were very brave. Oh. To go off medicine or to battle yeah, my family members. <laughs> I go. <laughs> both, like, both, both, I guess. Yeah, I, I think it's very hard uh, to convince your family members because they love you and you love them. And 
you know, it's like emotions just run very high. Mm. Yeah, emotions just run very high. Because they love you, so they think that they are helping you. And then you love them, and you are appreciating them, but they don't see that you are... Well, they think that you're making a mistake, basically. Right? So, yeah, lah. It's not easy, lah. It's not something that... Hello? Yeah. Uh, I yes. Mean, something when... Yeah, so my, my iPad just just decided to boot me out. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I was saying... Yeah, so it's like fighting with your loved ones is not something that anyone wants to do, lah. Mm. Especially... Uh, when it concerns health, right, or, or stuff, heavy going stuff. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad that I persevered, actually, because um, at least now I know what to tell people who are going through the same thing. Like when I teach and I encounter students who are struggling with certain issues, I can better relate. Yeah, so it's, very, it's been a very uh, eye-opening thing for me as well. Yeah. Okay, um, I have a next question. Should I go on to the next question or you all still want to say something else? Uh, don't mind. Share something else? Uh, Zoom over. Looks so nice. Okay. Hey, my... I see a towel? Oh, I, I actually, I cannot see the screen because my iPad decided to kill me out. Let me try and zoom. Yeah, I know, right? Like my... So far, no, no. I'm, I'm having a very, very bad tech day today. Yeah. Ta? Sorry? Too far. You eat it's a bit far? Yeah, yeah. You need to oh, keep like that. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, good. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, my next question for you guys, right? So all of us have been CDTs for a while. Yep. Uh, actually, actually, this conversation was something that we planned to have with Oswaldo on board, but because he can't make it, so it's just the three of us. Um, what is the best thing to you? Okay, so. I'm asking uh, Susan and Steph, what's the best thing to you about being a CGT? Best thing. What's the best thing to you about being a CGT? I got an answer. Susan, do you have an answer? Yeah, Steph, you go first. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm still thinking of my... I'm still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> my answer is in two parts. One is I enjoy sharing the joy of Zen Tango with people. Um, I like when some students think that they cannot draw and then when they finish, they're like, oh, very nice. And then they, they, there's like this spark in their eyes uh, that you can see that they're like so filled with joy that they created something that they are proud of. Like that, that, that I think is very, a very magical experience for me that I can never get tired of. And then the other part is that in being a Zen Tangler teacher and being a Tangler even, you gain a community. You get to tap into a community of people, like-minded people uh, that are located all around the world where to the extent if you don't know someone and then you find out that they're a Zen Tangler teacher, they're taking a trip to pre-COVID time, obviously. They're taking a trip in, in their country. And you're like, hey, can we like hang out? You know, can take me around to like some place where uh, it's fun in your country. And then the person will always be very, very open. And they'll be like, yeah, sure, let me bring you to this cafe. Or like when you're in my country, you should do this and that and that. You know, because those are like the fun things. And, like that's amazing because a lot of people I think these days are very closed off. For good reasons also, I think. But um, I think the community of Tanglers are very kind, very you know, open-minded. Very, majority lah, majority. Yeah, very resourceful as well. And uh, mm. yeah, we've had so many people tell us like, yeah, whenever you come over to my state or my country, you know, keep me out, let me know, so that we can hang out. And I think that's something that goes beyond like just just being like a Tangler or something. the heart of being human and like being welcoming to people and being open to different cultures and ideas and you know, like you know Zen Tango is no barriers, right? Even if you don't speak each other's language. Like Alicia, you know? Alicia, do you remember that being we hung out with her? 
that she was picking What do you mean by do I remember? She's my classmate. I was yeah, just to think her. Of course I remember. My goodness. Yeah, so like she, she we, we had to use Google Translate and but we had a really great time and it like goes beyond like language and culture. And I think that's what Google Translate. Excuse me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just an opening. It's not saying like, do you remember? <laughs> like, will you forget? No. Remember this. <laughs> so anyway, Susan, what do you want to answer? You see, she, okay. she quickly, Willis is getting awkward, right? She quickly hand it over to Susan. It's not how horrible <laughs> this person is. Ah, okay, Smart. Bye, Susan. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, actually, my answer is quite similar to uh, Steph. Uh, when is the part that when seeing some people, they after they draw, then they admire their artwork, then there's a surprise because they say that I, I never know that I can draw so well. And the other part, which is I'm very proud of, is although I'm not a art, uh, a person with an art background, but I can teach art. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's something, something very, mm, uh, out of my expectation. Okay, mm. so uh, with some of my classmates, uh, they will say that no, you are not an art student. You are from science stream, and you you don't like the art so much. Now how come now you teach art? I then I told them that I'm actually not teaching art, but I'm teaching the tango because I think that for myself. Maybe some of the uh, basic of the drawing or the colors, I still do not have the strong background. But for Zentangle, I can say that, mm, okay, I have more confidence to share about Zentangle. And the last one that I'm very proud of is actually uh, at the very beginning of my Zentangle uh, teaching journey, I met uh, an organizer. There is actually a art stationery shop called The Rainbow. Uh, so that time they also started to have some like the workshop, then conduct some uh, workshop for people. Then the time I met them, then they are very good in organizing and also some charity event. So there's a time that I, I tag along with them and do a lot of so-called the charity one. Uh, then to teach the uh, senior citizens to draw the so-called the experience of the Zen Tangle. Yeah, so the one is when looking at the senior citizen, those like maybe fifty five and above, they never know that they can draw. Fifty five is then, not senior citizen la. Okay, so because that that range is they they for for their registration is fifty five and above. So there is some people like maybe eighties. Wow. Yeah, they still enroll for the the class because the one is a just a so called the charity. So they just pay maybe ten ringgit then to participate mm-hmm. then. Uh, they just enjoying the drawing or the thing. So you know, in that Europe, time, right? In Europe, right? Mm. Fifty five is still considered young. Yeah. yeah, because last time, many yeah. many years ago, the retirement age is fifty five, but now keep increasing, right? So yeah. fifty five no, is Europe, not in Europe. Mm. Uh, I mean, in Europe, right? If you call someone who's uh. fifty five, uh, middle age or old, right? They're not very happy with you, you know. So it could mm. be a cultural thing also. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that one is the best part that I experienced after I become a CVT. So are we the worst part? No. <laughs> there's there's no, no part something worse. On, on air. No, you see, you have to think about it, you know. Like, it, it didn't come the naturally. Pause. She has to pause mm. first. Then, oh, politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. Politically <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> I want to balik kampong. <laughs> <laughs> you are at home already la. You want to buy it where? Malaysia Kampong Sometimes when, when people say hometown Is the place It's not just home But hometown is different right? China For me is different mm. Okay Debbie You don't need to answer your question ah. Oh I will I just thought you still got someone to add So I was patiently waiting for you Okay I have finished must end it. I finish. Go now. Hmm. Go now. Go now. Okay. So actually, the best part, ah, for me, ah, um, I guess for me, right, I never thought that I was an artist as well, lah. To be honest, because I I come from a very different background. Uh, I studied law and then I studied criminal, uh, criminal science or rather, we call it criminal justice. 
uh, and justice systems and criminology and then investigations and then policing. Okay, so very, very different from art. And also, uh, I grew up thinking that I couldn't draw. Uh, I, I come from a family of non-artists where nobody draws. Like the whole family doesn't draw. Uh, even today also, they still don't draw. And then when I when I went to get certified, uh, when I went to get certified to be a CCT, um, my parents weren't very happy with me. Um, can feel it, uh, I mean, you can actually feel the tension in the air. You know that they're not happy with uh, the decision that I made. Uh, of course, I came up with uh, the money myself, uh, So I don't know why they're not happy. But anyway, um, I digress. But anyway. So I'm not an uh, artist as well by training or by vocation. Steph is, right? and I think you can tell. So um, I think you can tell that there's a difference uh, in the way that she's confident about her drawings and she's very comfortable exploring techniques and stuff, you know? So all of these things don't come easy uh, for us, uh, me and Susan. Mm. Uh, because we are not, uh, we're not from the era in Asia where people actually believe that artists mm. can make a living. Cambodia. Does that make sense? Because uh, the era that we come from, our parents uh, lived in poverty. Uh, a lot of our parents or their peers live in poverty. So the the development of the country and everything, right? Uh, in those days, right, uh, everyone was like, it's like a fight to survive, you see. So art wasn't on the top of anybody's list at that time. And my parents also, uh, my, my mom and were very traditional people. Um, I mean, yeah, so they were very traditional people who don't actually see any future in art. Um, it's, I think it's also a very pragmatic approach to life, like overly pragmatic. So it's kind of like a, they don't see um, that an art career can benefit anyone anyway for example. So there's no uh, there's no way that other than just having a hobby in art, right? To them, it's just a hobby in art is something like enough, you know, like you, you cannot proceed beyond that because then there's no there's no uh, return on investment or, or whatever you want to call it. Lah. You know, there's no way you can regroup whatever you put into it. So um, I guess for me, having broken that mindset there are still struggles because uh, I also have, I, I mean, I still have a lot of friends who are working in Singapore and stuff like that. And they, they don't understand uh, how I live my life or, or what I've chosen to do with my life. A lot of them still don't uh, get me. And I'm fine with it. So a lot of the times, um, I find like, I find myself uh, outside of the, equation in the sense that um, I belong to one of the weird ones uh, in, my, in my friendship circles yeah? and I have gotten to the point where I'm so used to it that I don't even talk about it anymore. Like, I don't even talk about what I do anymore. And you can say that it's kind of like internalizing, it's not healthy or, or whatever, but it's just the way I am. I don't, I don't tell uh, unless it's Steph or Susan or people that I directly collaborate with, right? I, I don't really have much to say to them uh, because they can't understand. So, Zentangle has given me a family uh, that is as weird as I am. Sorry lah to say, but yeah. We are weird people, so. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, like we have like a common language. Too much quirks right? already. We have, like we have a common language, right? Uh, and then, you know, we have a common cause like, you know, we, we do uh, things for the community together, right? We teach the kind of classes we teach together. Um, a lot of people ask me uh, why I left my career. So before I, well, yeah, so they, a lot of them have asked me this question many times. Uh, my friends, my family have asked me many times why I left my career, you know, and what I see myself doing and why am I partnering someone like Stephanie Oh. Kind of they haven't asked me about Susan, so... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, I mean we, we joke about it because we're very close lah. Okay, it's not an insult to Steph lah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just people, it's just people asking because they don't understand, you know. So it's not, it's not, um, it's not like they are trying to be nasty by asking certain things, but it's because they really don't, they really don't understand, you know. There's no um, parallel for them. You get what I mean? And then, um, of course, for me, uh, I don't defend uh, anything. Like, like, I mean, I don't see the need to defend my decisions. And so I also don't explain. And then that contributes to them not understanding. You get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I say all of this to say that um, Zentangle has brought me to a lot of people that I would not have met. Uh, yeah, so in, in the past, coming to seven years, six years, mm-hmm. Seven, including the years, seven or eight years, lah. Uh, even before I was a certified Zentangle teacher, right? Um, I've met a lot of people that I would not have met, and I've taught a lot of people I would not have taught. Uh, I perhaps also uh, exchange uh, exchange words with people who are not so nice from a lot of other places that I would not have. <laughs> if I'm not if I'm not in this area, you know, like if I'm not in this uh, vocation. Let me just close my window because it's getting very windy suddenly. Yeah, not my camera, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So for me the best part of Zentangle is the community. And then I think I've said this a few times. Yeah, in the past. And I do mean it because I think that uh life is so stressful, right? You just you just need uh, a place where you can unwind mentally. And for me, that place has been the people that I know from Zentangle, uh, including my business partners, whom I never thought... Uh, well, we, we never uh, actually set out to be a business in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But of course, when, when Susan appeared on the horizon, we were already running a business together. Anything to add to that? Very quiet. Someone said, someone said in chat, I understand you perfectly. So, hopefully what we're saying resonates with some people. All our weirdos. Yes, you're all a bunch of weirdos. And all the other weirdos can also be it. No lah, it's just, it's just a common language, you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're talking about Zentangle, right, you already have a common topic uh, to sort of break the ice. So should I go to the next question or we both need a break or I don't know. Trying to focus. Come let's check in on our towns first before we move on. Okay. Okay. Susan, I like your B rule. Hi, hi. Okay. So I think later I will draw another one and oh, uh, yeah. use Why? a pen knife Why? to cut it. No no no, just like no, you just just like oh, a cut extra. cut that slip in, yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought shame shame want to cover. Grant is extra. No, no, no shame. This is very good. I think. <laughs> just need some shading. Hmm. I think it's nice then. Oh, I want to cover it. Huh? <laughs> then, Debbie, I I saw your flowers starting. Uh, my sharpens doesn't look like sharpens. It no, looks like rubby like and flower. something. Well, um, I, I'm not very good at drawing sharpens, I think. I think it would be that's why it's nicer. Oh. Um, my tongue today is very dark. Uh, yeah. I but actually have a bit of a detail. It's smart that you use white ink. It looks nice. Well, actually, I wanted to... See, I, I have like a bunch of things here. Uh, okay, you can't see because I zoom in. I have um, both my gold sh- uh, silver shadows out. I actually wanted to use silver shadows. But I think you won't be able to see anything <laughs> if I try to use silver shadow. Uh, you know why not? I, I tested uh, silver shadow out uh, on a card, right? So I have a card here. Can you see the card? Yeah, Susan! Yeah, can you see? Yes. But this one is like, the contrast is not so bad. This one, if I put down the silver shadow, uh, I don't think you can see anything. Okay, let me show you the other one. Susan, are you drawing something off screen? 
Are you drawing something off screen? Are you drawing something on your brown visual? No. Oh. No, okay, not you're yet. Like drawing something. Because now I want to look at Debbie's tiles. Oh. oh. Nice one. Wow. Oh, so I have one, Stephanie. Yeah. yeah, so I have one Stephanie and one Susan. Yeah, yeah I won't open it because yeah. actually there's another surprise that's inside. Oh. Uh, wow. Can you see the silver shadow? Okay, okay. Yeah, so I was worried that, you know, if I use silver shadow on these other magicals, this piece, right, I think I'm going to have a lot of problems like trying to make it contrast enough for the camera. Yeah. It's not really yeah, fun. so... But I, I do prefer the silver shadow. Uh, well, because my white is dying, so... My 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 one zero white is um uh, is not working. So I only have one pen essentially that uh, one white pen that works. This other white pen doesn't work also. So yeah, it's like very hit on me sir, with white pen. Yeah, so before you talk about your towel. Yeah, uh, 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 my towel. I did um that muka bezel that I taught and then I did the 2M3F fragment in a ribbon and then I did Maki in like a very deep and structured abstract like a, almost like yeah. a type I forgot <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I forgot I forgot to do oh, yeah. the 2 yeah I happily okay. I happily <laughs> finished Maki I happily did sharpens I did 3 uh, ops gems something and then I forgot <laughs> Oh no, okay, okay, I'll try and think of how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to recap, our screen for today was one regular tile and one bijou. You can place that however you want on your tile. This one is an example. This example shows a slightly more rectangular tile. Maybe you can do it on a side tile or on a sketchbook. Uh, we did fragments. Five tiles is too small, Steph. Five tiles cannot. It's too small. Five tiles cannot. Let me, let me yeah, show you what I mean. So, so you have oh, yeah, like a five tile. Short. And then you have a you you mm. got no space uh, uh, to do already. Yeah, yeah. five times really small. You need slightly bigger. Yeah, A six. Mm. Yeah, A six. So so basically, the one that I have is slightly bigger than A six. Is A six? Yeah, mm. this A six. And then this is five. Yeah. And then this is your regular tile. Yeah. And this is your video tile. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so you can't you can't really use a, okay. a five tile. Yeah. Mm. You know we use uh, the fragments from the FYIC. 2022 hangout. Make sure you're downloading the right one. January 22nd fragment is a gemstone or pearl or dewdrop. January 25th fragment is 2M plus 3F. And January 28th is uh, a fragment inspired by Naki. Yeah. If you'd like to follow uh, us on Instagram, uh, I'm using the 7 Forest 5 Reverse uh, Instagram profile. 7 Forest 5 Reverse. Bishop of the numerals. Debbie is at Pangle.pursuits. Susan Yeo is Susan Yeo.cvt. And you can find me at Hefen underscore Wolf. Please, if you've tangled along with us, please post your towel in the 7F5R Challenge uh, group on Facebook. You can just search 7F5R Challenge on Facebook or follow this link. Yeah? And you can also hashtag your uh, FYIC tiles with hashtag FYIC2022. Yeah. Baby, would you like to mm. go to the last question? I cheated. You know, what you do? Well, I forgot Show about my 2M and 3F, right? right? So I decided to add another YC. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I actually had one regular towel and then one, one B2 towel. And then I decided to put in another B2 here so that I can sort of contain my, <laughs> my missing fragments. It's a fragment of your confusion. Fragment of it. About this confusion, right? Oh, <laughs> I have yeah. a joke that last time in my when I still oh, yeah. uh, working as a programmer, my project manager always tried to say that if you cannot convince someone, you confuse him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I know why the boy you are like that. Now I understand. Okay, thank you for that insight. I know, right? Good luck. Rubbish, I did the person agrees with you. Okay, can. Yeah, man. 
<laughs> Until a lot of question marks in your head, then okay, okay. <laughs> Agree with you. <laughs> okay, now I'm really confused. I don't know how to put in my fragment. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll come around to you. Alright, my next question. Are you guys ready or not? Mm. What mm. is something you would tell someone who is a beginner tangler? So that means someone who is new uh, that hasn't uh, really been tangling for a long time. I don't want to answer this question before. Susan, you go first. The beginner, is it like no experience at all or those just who just the attended the 101? Both lah. Both lah. Mm. Okay. I I choose the second one for those who just uh, maybe just complete the one o one. Yeah, I presume. <laughs> yeah, I have to presume that the scenario. Okay. 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 You presume the scenario. Okay, Very because, good. Uh, okay, because when someone like maybe they have no art background when they attended one o one, they start to feel very excited. This is something simple and is uh, turned out so beautiful. So they, they have the the eager to like learn more, to uh, mm. have more patterns on hand. Mm. So what I always mm. tell them is actually that uh, don't don't chase after the pattern. Mm. Just chase like pattern. don't <laughs> chase, uh, chase and catch, chase, chase and catch. <laughs> because if you like, uh, you keep... <laughs> yeah, because for, for myself, after I learned it, I actually like uh in look uh act in that way. I try to find mm-hmm. a lot of patterns to draw. Mm-hmm. Then until a point that I feel that why so stressful? Why <laughs> can't it be just very simple and easy? So at that point of time, I go back to my basic. I look back my my one on one uh tiles, then start to repeat the same. Uh, tangle like the crimson moon, the holly ball, all those things. Then I find that I actually can find my um, uh, happiness, happiness, and also mm-hmm. the uh, I can relax when I draw those. So I always tell them that maybe you can uh, start to draw something that you like, but not too many. Yeah, you can just go back to the the basic patterns, the tangles. Then you try to do a tangulation to modify something. The one is also quite interesting. Instead of you just trying for the new patterns. Mm. Yeah. I also think with new tangles also, then, then they will try to like vomit as many t- tangle patterns that they know to one tile. Then it looks very cluttered. So yeah. it's not like, you know, as, you know like 101 patterns, then you can draw very nice. Sometimes it's, like Susan say, simple, simple is nice. Is no, of course not. Debbie, do you want to go next? Why? You got some very, very special thing that you can no, tell me until I go. No, no. I just you scared that I steal your answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go next. Yeah, so actually, right, because now, okay, every time when we ask this question, right, it's a different answer, actually. Because um, maybe, maybe um, when we went to get certified, uh, because it was kind of long ago for us already. Susan got certified in 2016 and Steph and I both got certified in uh, 2015. So the the whole um, industry has actually changed uh, over the years. And because of the pandemic, uh, a lot of things are available online now that would not have been available. So you get like a lot of people uh, on YouTube, you get a lot of people on Instagram, you get a lot of, uh, of things that are online that would never have been online if not for the pandemic. Um, there's a good and a bad thing. Uh, the good thing is that more people are actually uh, getting into art for their mental health. Um, a lot of people are taking their health more seriously now because of the pandemic. They are not working like crazy hours, you know, like trying to, to juggle three jobs or something because seriously now you have one job, you are like very busy obviously because it's all work from home and stuff, right? So, um, I say all that to say that uh, it's good to be a beginner tangler and have the world at your feet, right? 
and you have a lot of choices now that we never had. Uh, a lot of CCTs teach online, a lot of uh, YouTubers publish work online, a lot of freebies are online, including this video is a freebie. Uh, and we are also publishing on, on, on YouTube, for example, right? So you, you, you are at no means, uh, by no means you are at a, uh, how do I explain? So that means you are never left alone, uh, basically, because you have all of these things to refer to if you want them. But at some point, you should also take a class with a CCT, a proper, a proper paid class, not just a freebie class, uh, like this one, or casually, uh, well, ours is not a free class either. Ours is more of like a social tangling, right? We just take uh, some art supplies, a hot drink, and just sit there and talk and tangle. So a lot of fun to be had. But at the same time, I think that if you never take a class with a CCT uh, as an intro to the tangle, um, then you will not understand a lot of the things that we are talking about. Uh, or you might misunderstand some of the things that we're talking about. Because now, uh, it's not like uh, in the past where all the Zentangle art was mostly black and white. Uh, at, at one point, it was mostly black and white because that was how Rick and Maria taught uh, Zentangle. Um, but you will see that there are many artists out there or many CZTs out there, many Tangles out there who are actually incorporating more and more techniques into their art. And it, it's... It can be overwhelming if you don't start from the basics because um, you can only build up from the basics. You can't build up from like, or rather it's more confusing to build up from uh, a harder to learn technique. Does that make sense? And sometimes when we pick up something that is uh, kind of like five steps ahead of us and we're not thinking right, then it has the opposite effect. When I mean the opposite effect, is that it kind of, kind of turns you off kind of turns you off rather than uplift you. So that is a, a signal, I would say, that you need to slow down on your, on your quest for more tangles or your quest for more techniques or both. Does that make sense? Because if you can't get the, the, the first uh, foundation stone laid, right, then it's very hard to build on later on or unlearn the, maybe the technique that you pick up wrongly or misunderstood. There are a lot of uh, artists out there who are doing uh, semi Zentangle. And that doesn't... Uh, maybe that is their personal interpretation of the method. But it may not be your own. Or it may not be the mainstream interpretation. But you won't know until you actually get a class with the CDP. That's what I'm trying to say. Because in the end, right, everyone is an artist. And in the end, everyone will have their own uh, interpretation. Even, even, even Steph and I, we are very different, you know, when we interpret things. Uh, Steph and I are very different. Susan and I are very different. Susan and Steph are very different. So even though we are together in the same uh, studio, uh, our approach is very different. So it might, be, it might be a good starting point, you know, for you to base off your serious and tangled exploration with a CCT. Yeah. Most CCTs actually uh, teach a basic Zentangle course at a very affordable price. Especially now that everything is online, right? Uh, the choices are... There are so many choices, actually. I mean, more so than when we first started. Yeah. So I think, I think it's a good thing that all of us are beginning to teach uh, online and make things and resources available online. And... I think also um, there's a lot of comparing going on, which is harmful. But when you start off at the beginning, right, and then you watch your art grow, there's also a beauty in that. Okay, Steph. Hmm. Hmm. I think I think that you shouldn't like let me say that. Don't compare yourself with others or compare mm. annoyer, as we like to call it, right? So don't 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 compare your chapter one with some of chapter twenty one. You know, some 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 of us have been doing this for years and years. Some of us do this professionally for a living. You know, if you're just a hobbyist, if you're just starting out, then you see all of these amazing artists that have been doing it for many years. 
uh, it's easy to feel overwhelmed or to feel discouraged like oh my it's, like you go for your first class then you're like oh this is great and then you go online and you see people doing such amazing things and you're like oh actually mine is very ugly but I don't think you should compare it that way because everyone has their own journey everyone has their own path that they need to walk um, and I think this session also showed you know that there's a reason why Zenhango found you there's a reason why you found Zenhango so you have your own journey to walk with the Zenhango method and um, it will serve its purpose in your life uh, in different ways as it did to other people. So you shouldn't compare your journey, especially when you're just starting out, with someone else's journey when they've already been through it for like years and years, you know, because then you miss out on on what could actually be something very beneficial for yourself, very beneficial for your mental health, very beneficial for your physical health as well. So just take it a step at a time. Uh, don't rush the process. You, know, you will get there eventually. And um, always be open-minded, I guess. You know, don't think like, oh, like Debbie said, you know, my teacher taught me this way, therefore it's the only right way. Sometimes, you know, if you go to a different teacher, you can learn different techniques, you can learn a different sort of ideal or different idea or different technique. And uh, that can be beneficial to your overall journey, especially now, as Debbie said, everything is so accessible, right? Last time you can only, if you live in Singapore too bad, you can only learn from Singapore teachers, but then now if like, I, I can like uh, learn from Malaysian teachers, Japanese teachers, German teachers, if I stay up, maybe I can learn from America teachers as well, even with the time zone differences, right? So it's great, you know, and you have a lot more um, choices now, so it's just depending on uh, how you want to craft your journey and what you want to learn. And you can move on from there. You can go from there. Yeah. yeah. So, let's do a, a last check-in with our tiles. I can see Susan is... Just... Last check-in. I still got one more question. Oh, you still got one more question. It's 4.30 already. Eh? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Can. Is, it very, is it a very long, tedious question? Or is it like a snappy question? No. Okay. Actually, it wasn't meant for you. It wasn't oh. meant for you. Oh. Yeah, oh, then keep it until the next no, time. Since you are here, you all have to answer. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, it was meant for the three of you. Lah. It's not a hard question, don't worry. It's just that because uh, when we went to get certified, uh, a lot of things were not in place lah, at that time. Right? Because uh, Zentangle was much earlier. I mean, I mean the Zentangle... Uh, the Zentangle industry was much younger, not much earlier. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, um, what is something that you wished or you wish someone had told you uh, as you were becoming a CDT? You know, like, what is something that you would want some, someone to tell you uh, from your journey as a CDT? I think you got this question before, right? No. Slightly different. Okay. Or slightly different, okay. The other question that we answered before was, what would you tell yourself in the past? But this is not. This is, what do you want, what What did you feel that, you know, you wish someone had told you about becoming a CDT? It's more of a mentorship thing. Uh. The other one was like, telling yourself like, more like self-reflecting, you know? But it can be both. I mean, it can be related. I have an answer for this. I also have an answer. I just thought about it. I didn't pre-prepare the question. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> usually, usually I know Steph pre-prepares the question, but I didn't. I don't have answers for all the questions that I prepared beforehand, but I, I can answer this one. You can go for Can? Uh, since I thought the longest, right? Okay, I better go first. Um, yeah, so when I was becoming a CDT, I was only the fourth in Singapore, and I wish someone had been kinder to me uh, at that time. Because at that point, like I said, I was battling my parents, and they don't really like the idea uh, of me becoming an artist or a CDT. 
So I had no support from them, uh, emotionally la, and financially uh, at that point. Uh, and I felt like um, I felt like I needed to be assured about taking these steps. Um, and also, I think it, it was hard because at that point in time, the CZT community also was in a bit of a transition. So, uh, there were a lot of uh, friendly rivalries and serious rivalries going on in those days. And I just wish that I had more support from other CZTs or other artists. <clears throat> yeah. So, I guess that wasn't wasted also. Uh, because um, I take it very seriously when people ask me <clears throat> questions about being a CDT and I take it upon myself to tell them that, you know, be kind to you lah, because uh, a lot of the times we are very unsupported in our decision making and I realise that I'm not the only one that has to walk through that by myself. So it has come up in a lot of my conversations with a lot of people uh, especially people I meet through the CCT conferences. So a lot of people tell me that they have difficulties like starting out or they feel very unsupported. Um, and I wish I had that kind of uh, friend to walk me through as well. But uh, of course, it's a very different world uh, now. So I, I don't blame anybody. I just have that wish uh, that I had someone to help help me along, you know, help me understand certain things about the community, about my artistic journey. Um, I'm glad that I have business partners now uh, and we share the vision because otherwise my journey will be a very lonely one. As in, my, my journey will be a very uh, self-directed one and, and very lonely and, you know, it's like I will just be doing what I'm doing, um, not sure whether I'm getting anywhere. So it's a good thing to have uh, friends who believe in you, yeah, and also you believe in them, lah. Susan, you have your answer. Yes, okay, actually, my answer. Actually, my answer is no answer, no. Your because, <laughs> <laughs> because um, I cannot think of anything that I should know before that. But I think I am a very lucky person after uh, in the Zentangle journey because um, even before I go to Taiwan for the seminar, mm. I actually have a... Okay, the, the friends that go together, actually we do not know each other before. But we are uh, being connected via a KL teacher, Michisu, so she, she actually says that, that she has a few students are going there for certified. Okay, so we, we want to, to get someone that to go together and book the hotel room. So we oh. all uh, contact in via the WhatsApp. Then we meet, first time we meet in the Taiwan airport. Okay, so I think starting from the journey, I have a lot of support. Even after I got my certified then I meet the organizer that uh very active to to uh to plan for the course so I just uh, follow them then maybe uh once a while I will plan for my own course so in the past seems that a lot of uh, people that will give support then when I come to Singapore then I meet two of you so it seems like quite um, I, I can say that it's a very blessed it's a very blessed journey in a Zentangle. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, so I'm the unlucky one. You're also putting... <laughs> no, not saying unlucky. You are the pioneer, <laughs> so you have to go no, through something Steph. that... Yeah. <laughs> I say that... No, no, I say that because Steph has a mom. Right, yeah, so mm -hmm. Steph went to get certified with her mom and mm -hmm. I didn't have anyone. Correct. Yeah, so, so I even... really didn't have anyone. Yeah. Yeah, so even with me also, like... There wasn't others and things like that. I understand what Debbie means by like, it was very isolating. Like, you, you don't have anyone asking questions that you have. But, like she said, I had my mom. Lah. So, it's like, at least you have someone to share the experience with you and sort of figure things out as you go along. Whereas, 
it's very different when if you're by yourself and you don't have anyone to sound off yeah. and talk to about your ideas or like share about like your um let's say insecurities or your fears you know? so I, I can I can understand that way. You know? Yeah. So for me I had my mom uh to go through the journey with me. Uh so my my advice for myself uh it's not your advice yourself. What, what I is would... something you wish someone had told you? Yeah, about someone had told me. Yeah. Is, uh, don't be afraid to ask for opportunities. That would be my thing. Because I feel last time, when I was a lot younger, like mm. I was 35, I was like 19, right? So mm-hmm. I had a lot of imposter syndrome. So this was just... Uh, imposter syndrome? Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was me coming you mean you, you, you mean that you in, in, what, try to in, be someone else's imposter or, what? or someone was... What, no, what no, is imposter the, I don't understand. Okay, okay. you explain. Thank you. Okay. I have definition. Because I have one please. question. So in people struggling with imposter syndrome often feel like a fraud and often live with the fear that at any moment others will find out that their success is un- unearned. Yeah. So I had just come out of like a, a phase in my life where I had decided that art was going to be my career and then I went to the seminar and then I felt like I wasn't a really great artist. There were so many people that were better than me. And then you go to the seminar, people are like, oh yeah, it's so nice, yeah, it's so nice. So this was like one of the first few times where I had someone other than my mom telling me that my art was good. Yeah. So when I came back to Singapore to like teach classes, I was a bit hesitant to ask to for like people uh, whether they would want to like attend a class or whether I could use their venue for uh, teaching uh, teaching venue, you know, like a teaching vocation. So I was very hesitant. But actually you don't have to be cheerful. Like the most people will say is no you cannot or no I'm not interested. But what if they say yes, right? So the, the benefit is much better than uh, the fear of someone rejecting you. So if you just continue asking for opportunities, then eventually good things will come your way. Yeah, find yeah, okay. the next person to call. Yes. So now I got two plus Daniel <laughs> that I can call. Very good. <laughs> yeah. It's a joke, it's a joke. Please don't write to us. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Susan, <laughs> Why you bully oh, Steph? It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. Oh my goodness. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. We, we always tease her that we, we got the, 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 the lovely end of the Short party. end of the yeah. last yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. mm. uh, our age gets uh, are quite wide with her. She's the youngest. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes we don't understand her. I think a lot of times you don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand myself either. You are doing quite well. Are we? I don't Susan. know. Like, I don't know what I'm doing already. So I'm doing shading. <laughs> Susan like must use a paper to cap. <laughs> Otherwise, yep, yep. Wow, so nice. The way you did but, it. But but I don't like the. Huh? 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 What? Cap here know, and huh? cap there, but I don't. Yeah. I. Don't really, I don't think it's very really nice. Maybe I'll change I later. Nice. No, don't change it. I think it's nice. Ah. Okay. What yeah. is gapping what? I see yeah. a lot. Okay. <laughs> this is the first level. Gap, gap. <laughs> this yeah, is the gap. second level. Gap the, the ten cards. Oh. The second level is the flower. Uh, gap because the I level. cut in this one in a video and the okay, other I think classic. I, I, think, I think I know why. Susan, I think you, you just mm. use a plain, plain bijou, it will look nice. Uh, a plain bijouism. Plain bijouism. Yeah, I think it's because there's oh, so many layers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Or? 